Well, fine. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Patricia and I in Traveling for History. I'm in Sheldon, Vermont today, and this cemetery is known by two names. One name is the Sheldon Home Association Cemetery. And if you plug that into Google Maps, it'll show up. I can assure you, Google Maps will not get you here. What you need to do is once Google Maps tells you you have arrived, keep driving. <laughs> And uh, when you have a choice between going straight into what's called Moss Glen, there is a sign, or bearing right, bear right. And uh, eventually you'll see this on your right-hand side. It's not that far on the bend. Um, but uh, something to be aware of. Now, the other name for this place, and this was the reason why I wanted to come see it, because what does it mean, the Home Association, right? Well, the other name for this place is the Sheldon Poor Farm Cemetery. All these graves here, and I think there are 324, maybe 327 graves. Everyone here had lived on and very likely also worked on the Poor Farm. Now the Poor Farm was located across the street. I'm not sure if they mean across the street over yonder or across the street over here. There's a mobile home here now. I don't want to film that. People are living there. So I don't know which side of the street, uh, which street they're talking about. Um, so the poor farm, what the heck is that? I remember as a kid, my mother talking about, oh, we don't want to end up at the poor house. Poor house, poor farm, same thing. So poor farm. That was where, uh, so the, the purpose of the poor farm was so the towns, villages, um, cities would take care of their own poor. This was not a federal thing. This was left to the towns to take care of, take care of their own poor. So, uh, you know, people with disabilities, uh, whether they're physical or uh, you know, mental health related, uh, people who just couldn't make enough to to survive would be uh, sent to the poor farm and uh, whoever was able-bodied enough to work was was to work now vermont had uh, poor farms practically from the statehood and um, let's start walking this place because it's cold here today. I mean, there's snow on the ground. In two days, it's supposed to hit 60 degrees Fahrenheit, 60, 60, geez Louise. But, um, now, the poor farm system lasted, uh, let's see, when the um, Social Security Act passed in the 1930s, I want to say it was 1936. Unfortunately, I don't have the information with me. This is coming from my memory. That was the beginning of the end of the poor farms. And um, the last one to close in the state of Vermont was what, right here in Sheldon. It closed in 1968. All right, let's go see if we can see any names on here. A little hard for me to wrap my head around uh, these folks. Um, if you weren't, and understand that the caregivers were appointed, and um, if you were lucky, you had a good caregiver who cared about you. But, you know, just as often was the case, you had caregivers who did not. And uh, what would be your life if you had a caregiver who didn't give it, who didn't care? All right. Let's see. Mm. Looks like a lot of these names have worn off, but I do see some names and dates. Let's see. Let's throw one over here. Oh, and also you could plug in the... Uh, the um, 
range coordinates from findandgrave.com, which is how I saw this it was on the bend and I uh, didn't have to strain my eyeballs trying to look into the woods. This one says, I think, uh, was it ranges? What do you think that says? I always think you're with me when I'm filming these places. Such uh, an interesting cemetery. You can see that uh, these headstones are pretty uniform in size. Let me see. This person lived from 1851 to 1920. It's hard to say. I think you would agree. It's hard to say. Let's keep going. William Baker, 1857 to 1920. If you want to see my photographs, they'll be on Instagram and uh, Facebook. Traveling for History, 1L and Traveling. If you are enjoying my content, please subscribe to my channel. Sarah, I do not know that last name. Can you make it out? I think she also died in 1920. Not a good year. Antoine Murray, 1845-1920. place doesn't look all that well cared for, at least right now. A lot of uh, tree parts down, branches, twigs. Glad not walking this when it's uh, warmer out. Don't want to come home with a tick again. This is a person's name. Hmm, I've got no idea. 19... Twenty-one died in 1921, 1862, 1921. <clears throat> no idea what that says. Hopefully you can understand me. It is uh, fairly windy. Today, 10 to 20 miles per hour from the northwest. <laughs> Let's see. So, I don't know if these folks were um, all uh, here because they were poor or in, if any caregivers are buried here, uh, that I really don't, I can't tell you. Well, here was a, some with the, associated with the American Legion. And their name is not readable, but I can see. I think you can see, it says American Legion right there. See, the danger of having a tr trees in a cemetery, though they're beautiful, is that it uh, will uproot the headstone at some point. Let's keep going. Charles... Will? 
I think it says will. I really couldn't tell you anything else that says. Part of it is obstructed by snow, but there's not a lot of snow on the ground. Just enough to be annoying. Of course, if you like snow, that's one thing, but uh, I'm not a fan at this point in the year. It's March 29. And as I walk this place, you know, the way, the way it worked for mills, when people were working in mills, the reason why those windows were so large on uh, mill buildings was because that was the su that was the sunshine was used as the light. And um, people worked from, uh, well, practically from sun up to sundown, so a 12, 13 hour day. So think about farm, farm life, they wouldn't have Sundays off, I wouldn't think. Or perhaps they did to go to church. Though, I mean, what farm doesn't have work for someone to do? Especially if it had uh, animals, which I'm betting they did. read this. <clears throat> I see some more down back over there. Did you see that too? Now we can. Charles Skinner, 1863-1925. That is very readable. This one is just giving us the death date of, uh, what is that? September 26, 1925. You don't even know how old she was. That's a shame. And the stones back here look even older. I apologize for uh, sniffling. My nose is running like crazy. Let's uh, come back here and look at these headstones. I don't know if they'll be any more readable. I do see at least a couple that might be readable. These look pretty old though compared to the others. I think also this was a 150 acre farm out here, poor farm. Uh, so the building, uh, I'm talking about, that was across the street. The farm was, a, I think it was 150 acres. Uh, I will have the information on the poor farm, both in the description below and the whole description of it uh, on my website, travelingforhistory.com or, or travelingforhistory.org. Either of those addresses will get you to my information on there's some back here too. George Clark, 1866 to 1938. Maybe that's 1886. Let's see. Peter Raya, 
Virginia Benway, 1859 to 1932. <clears throat> The first letter is, it looks like it's gone now. 18. 1863 to 1935. Yes, 18, no, it's 1853. No, 1863? Well, what are the dates out of that? Holy cow. Oh, let's see one that has fallen down. This one is Lucia Coda, 1853-1935. Is there snow here? There is some ice on top of the snow. Ah, my smartest moment. This is Warren Chaffee, 1860 to 1935. So 74, 75 years old. This one has tipped over. John Callahan, 1868 to 1936. Something like that. Whew. Joseph Center, 1862 to 1904, 1934. Okay. You know, frankly, I like to say their names. It, uh, you know, that adage of uh, you're not forgotten if you're on someone's mind. Well, if your name is spoken, I suppose, it's everything on your mind that you've spoken the name. Catherine Randall, 1855-1939. So what do we have today instead of poor farms, you're wondering? Well, we have um, subsidized housing uh, for... for um, the um, elderly and adults with disabilities, and Section 8 for the poor. It could also be elderly and uh, adults with disabilities, but uh, so I did read that there, there was someone in um, government, this is the U.S. government of course, who wanted to bring back poor farms. He gads. Let's move that jerk to a poor farm, shall we? Get rid of another politician. In Burlington, Vermont, when because your know, towns want to be really clear about who was uh, under their charge for these poor farms and poor houses, and in Burlington, Vermont, so many people had come in for the uh, poor farm or poor house accommodations that some were actually put 
into the jail, debtor jail. I'm sure you've heard of debtor prisons. Ira Allen, brother of Ethan Allen, died in a debtor's prison and is buried in a pauper's grave in, is it Philadelphia? Pennsylvania? I think so. Shout out, by the way, to um, Jennifer Theoret, who works at the St. Albans, northbound St. Albans, uh, Vermont, rest stop. I was chatting with her today. She also loves history. You know how much fun it is to talk to someone who loves history? It's fun. Anyway, she was the one who mentioned Ira Allen buried in Philadelphia in the pauper's grave. Because I was talking about this place here. And uh, how fun is that? So the shadow continues for a moment. Jennifer, it was really fun to chat with you. Brighten my day. This is George Coleman, 1870 to 1930. Uh, I wonder if these are marble. I mean, because given this is so white here, I actually think these are marble headstones. Alexander Barshow, 1856 to 1928. Well, out that tree there. I wonder who cares for this place. They deserve to be cared for. Joseph DeForge, 1866 to 1928. Mm, Salima Martel. The last name Coda. What is that person's name? 1855 to 1926. But what's the first name? Perry? Peter? It is Peter Coda. I think it's Peter. person's name. <clears throat> All right, let's go back over here. I also know that some uh, villages and towns um, pooled their resources Franklin County, and there were four places in Franklin County. Sheldon was not one of them, as I recall, but four, uh, four that uh, pooled the resources and had one poor farm for all their poor. I 
Ooh, now this one. I wish we could read it. Because this one has writing on it as well. Well, you know, this quotation down here. I don't know what it says. All right, well, this is Patricia and I am traveling for history. This is part one. This is the end of part one of uh, my walking of the Sheldon Poor Farm Sanitary in Sheldon, Vermont. If you like my content, please subscribe to my channel. I upload every day of the week. It's March 29, 2022, and that is still true. So, a lot of bang for your buck, especially since you're not paying anything for it. Um, but, uh, you follow me on social media, see my photos on Instagram and uh, Facebook. Traveling for history, one L in traveling. Use quotation marks or the at sign, and you'll find me right away. I'm on Twitter, traveling for HI with the number one. I have a website, travelingforhistory.com or .org. All sorts of good stuff. So, um, anyway. And uh, I chat uh, pretty easily. You can find me pretty much everywhere. All right. On that note, this is the end of part one. I'll see you in part two. Until I see you again, have a fabulous night. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.